Hi, I'm Brian Leversee, pastor at Fellowship Baptist Church here in Vienna, West Virginia. And we would invite you to come home with us at Fellowship every Sunday on WTAP NBC and WIYE CBS. We know that you'll love worshiping together with us. We look forward to worshiping with you. Stretched out wide, barely hanging on to life, left to suffer on your own. You came for all mankind to bridge the great divide, somehow ended up alone. Because of all the blood and tears you shed, I will never know that kind of loneliness. Your spirit never leaves me, even when I'm hurting. I don't have to bear that burden on my all the pain and buried all the shame when you made that rugged tree your righteous throne because of you I'll never walk alone you came here as a man I know you understand what it's like to walk these roads. My problems don't compare to that crown you chose to wear, yet you took them as your own. Because of all the blood and tears you I will never know that kind of loneliness Your spirit never leaves me Even when I'm hurting I don't have to bear that burden on my own You carried all the pain and bear all the shame when you made that rugged tree your righteous Lord and because of you I'll never walk alone mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. your spirit have to bear that burden on my own. Lord, because of you, I'll never walk alone. Because of you, I'll never walk
Hi, I'm Brian Leversee, pastor here at Fellowship Baptist Church in Vienna, West Virginia. And we are delighted that you are worshiping with us on our program, Coming Home with Fellowship Baptist Church. Hey, we'd love to see you in person though. Hey, make plans to come and be part of our services. We have a wonderful children's ministry. We have adult small groups on Sunday morning that we know you'd fit right in with. And, and we know that when you come to worship with us in person, it's gonna feel like you're coming home. So go to our website at takemehome.church. There you can find out all the information as to times that we're meeting and, and know that you've had a warm invite to come and join us here at Fellowship. Also, if you're enjoying this program, we'd love for you to visit our website again at takemehome.church and click the Give button. We want to continue to get this program out to you and your financial support will help us to continue to do that. God bless you and we hope that you enjoy the rest of the service. Now back to the preaching. There's this spirit of Antichrist in the world, that which is against God. And it shows up and it's evident by this fruit that's produced. And we see that in our world today, just frothing and fomenting to a head. Notice with me, as we continue on, we also see this, these hallmarks showing up not just in behavior and in the heart, but, but even in religion. Notice verse five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is that seducing spirit. This is that antichrist spirit, blinding and blocking the minds and hearts of people to see the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the spirit of antichrist we see it evidenced in these last days. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, if I'm doing my math right, John was writing this some 2,000 years ago. What does he mean last day? How many for you, 2,000 years seems like a long time? How many for you, this hour might seem like a long time? <laughs> I'm tracking with you. I get it. Listen, time is different to us. To Jesus, 2,000 years is nothing. He's eternal. To God, 2,000 years is nothing. He's eternal. And we need to have a context for understanding what John is writing under the power of the Spirit of God when he says these are the last times. The last times, listen to me, the last time started when Jesus ascended into heaven. You, you remember what Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended. He said, I go, but I'm what? Oh, come on, guys. I go, but I'm what? coming again. How many are glad for that verse of scripture? How many of you are glad this morning for that promise of God? I go to prepare a place for you. And then when I come again, I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And what was he doing? He was giving that promise of his imminent return. He didn't tell them a day. He didn't tell them an hour. He gave them some signs and some understanding of the seasons. But you'll find that all of the gospel writers you'll find that all of the epistle writers of the New Testament reference an imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. From that moment on in this church age, we live in the last times. And we're looking for the ever-present return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how many of you know if it was the last days when John was writing, it's even more the last days now. And we're living in that time and we're looking for the return of Jesus. And I want you to know that while the dawn has begun with the first coming of Jesus, the full sun will completely be in its space when Jesus returns to establish his kingdom. And the possessor, which is the antichrist spirit of this world, will be dispossessed as Jesus takes the reins of this world and establishes his kingdom in righteousness and in holiness. And how many of you are looking forward to that day where Jesus reigns here on earth? How many of you know we won't be worried about election day on that day? We won't be frustrated with governments on that day. We will have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords presiding over all of the things that take place here on earth. And what a blessing that will be. So we see the spirit of Antichrist. Secondly, in our passage, I want us to see the spirit of the Holy One. 
Now, this is, the, this is the stark contrast. This is where we see the fellowship. This is where we see the relationship. The Antichrist spirit is in the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, deceiving, seducing, blocking, discouraging, depressing, captivity. All of these things are associated with this darkness that is the spirit of Antichrist. But I want us to see the spirit of the Holy One that those who have relationship with Jesus have. Notice with me here, as we continue in 1 John chapter number two, turn back there with me. And we're gonna be looking at verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. There's no excuse to be an ignorant Christian. There's no excuse to be a believer that's lacking wisdom in these last days. There's no excuse to be a Christian that's confused and perplexed by what we see is going on. But I'll tell you, the reason why a bulk of Christianity is confused and is perplexed and is seduced is because they're not spending time in God's word, because they're not praying for wisdom from the one who knows all things, and they're not walking in the spirit of truth. But we have access to be taught by the one who knows all things. Jesus told his disciples, the spirit of God will lead you to all truth. This is that spirit of the Holy One. And I love this. In verse 20, it says we have an unction. This refers to that indwelling power of the spirit of God. We have this anointing as a child of God. How many of you think it's pretty special that the God of all creation has taken up residency in your life and in my life if we know him. The Bible says, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. That's an amazing thought. And because of that, there's that unction. And how many of you are glad for the times that as a believer, the Holy Spirit has ministered to you directly through God's word and convicted your heart and captured your mind and lighted and illuminated your path so you know what direction to go in. Hey, are you like me? Have you ever sat in a service before and felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God as the word of God is preached? Have you ever felt him ring your heart? Have you, have you ever felt him highlight direction? I'm not talking about some spurious thing extant from the word of God and a separate experience that we have on our own. That's not, that's not the Holy Spirit guiding you. You know, a lot of people will try to navigate life based on their feelings and on their experiences and say, well, the spirit led me to do this. I'm gonna boldly tell you this morning, the spirit of God isn't leading you to do anything if you're not in the word of God. The Holy Spirit of God is not in competition with the Word of God. They work in concert, one with the other. The Holy Spirit will convict you concerning the truth that's been revealed in His Word. And so you can't just go, oh, I felt like, I've heard this many times in ministry. Oh, I just feel the Lord leading me to do this. Well, what has He said in His Word? I don't know, but I just really feel it strongly. Well, you probably ate some pizza real late at night. How many of you felt that strongly before? And you feel things and you experience things, but our feelings and experiences aren't always truth. And our feelings and experiences aren't always the leading of the Spirit of God. And the only thing that anchors us to know if the Spirit is leading in of our life is if we have knowledge of God's Word. Because that's the truth that the Spirit of God is going to lead us into. So we have that unction, we have that anointing of the Spirit of God. And that's in stark contrast to the Spirit of Antichrist that exists in this world. And it produces different fruit in our life. It produces noticeably different fruit in our life. And and we can make assessments about our relationship and walk with the Lord based on that. So we see the spirit of the Holy One. Notice this in verse 21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. And this is the wonderful thing. This is what I enjoy about standing in the pulpit and preaching God's word to believers is you have the spirit of God. So the spirit that I'm preaching in is bearing witness with your spirit so that we know that this is truth. We know that this is truth. And that's why you don't just come and say, well, I wonder what Brian has to say today. 
Well, Brian said this. No, the question should be, did God say this? Is this God's word? Now, whether you have an iPad or an iPhone or you have an old-fashioned pages and words, written scripture in your hand, would you hold that up just by way of testimony today? Did you bring God's word to God's house today? Hold that up. Isn't that a beautiful sight? How many of you like in a church service hearing those pages turn? Isn't that great? I, I hope that one day they add that to an iPad or an Apple just so that we can hear that in a church service still. Listen, this is how you know what's true because you have that unction and you have the presence of the Spirit of God and you bring his word to test the spirits to see whether they be of God. It's not Brian Leversy said so or some other preacher said so or some Sunday school teacher said so. It's thus saith the word of the Lord and the Spirit of God will work on that and convict concerning that and guide us concerning that. And the reason we need that is because this spirit of Antichrist that's in the world is very deceptive and very seducing. Notice as we continue to read on, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And, and this is John with both barrels dealing with the problem that's existing in the early New Testament church. These people that were in your church, these people that are leaving, don't be discouraged by that. They were not of God. They left us because they were not of us. Otherwise, they would have continued with us. They did not have the sealing of the Holy Spirit of God. They did not have the life change of the indwelling of the Holy One. The fruit was not being produced in their life. They were looking for excuses to live any way that they wanted to. And they grabbed on to this false doctrine that Jesus never came in the flesh and that he never died in the flesh and that he never rose in the flesh and that sin is just an abstraction of thought and not a real thing. So you can live whatever way you want and when you enter the spirit world, that's when things will count. And this is the doctrine that was seeping into the church. And John just point blank says, if you deny the son and you deny the Father, you are antichrist. And I'll tell you what, there are a whole lot of cults and even mainline denominations that you can throw right in that bucket that John is talking about this morning. There are a lot of mainline denominations that while they might not verbally come out and say that they deny the Lord Jesus Christ and they deny the Father in their application of truth and in their living and in their behavior, they do not abide by a gospel-centered message. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. And we need to understand that because it's deceptive and because it's seducing. Notice, that's what John is going to say here. As we continue, notice with me, verse number 22, who's a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And you can't split them up. How many of you understand? This is the three in one. This is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is God. This is the Godhead. This is what Bible teaches. This is what we believe. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And Jesus is God, and he's just as much God as the Father, and he's just as much God as the Holy Spirit. They're the three in one. And if you deny the Son, you're denying the Father. If you deny the Father, you're denying the Son. I just want you to think through the belief systems that exist out there that in some aspect or another deny this truth. And it's an antichrist spirit. It's against the truth of who Christ is. Notice verse number 25, and I'm sorry, verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. So we've seen the spirit of Antichrist. We've seen the spirit of the Holy One. And I want us to see the abiding spirit. That spirit of the Holy One, that Holy Spirit that's in you is a promise that's given to us by God. It's that comforter. It's that great seal. 
And the Bible tells us that he will never leave us or forsake us. He abides with us. And how many of you are glad in the year 2020, God hasn't left us? But he's abiding with us. And he's speaking to us through his word and he's calling us. And he's growing us for his glory. And in verse 24, John says, let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. What did they hear from the beginning? that gospel that was originally given to them, not this new stuff that's seeping into the church. Paul writes against this even in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, as there's again attacks in the church concerning the resurrection of Christ. And was this a bodily resurrection or was this some spiritualized incident? This was just rife in the New Testament church, this false doctrine that was seeping in. And John says, no, no, hold to that which you were given in the beginning. Hold to that gospel that you originally grabbed onto. Abide with it. Let it abide in you. Verse 24, if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. In other words, you won't go out from us because you are of us. If the Holy Spirit has taken root in your life, if you've experienced the transformation of a new life in Christ, then you're going to continue. And how many are glad no matter what's facing us, no matter who gets elected or who doesn't get elected, how many of you are glad that Jesus is still on the throne abiding with you and with me? Can I tell you what I don't want happening? Week of our missions conference. Whatever happens on November 3rd happens on November 3rd. And then we come into church and we're like, oh, can you believe it? Can you believe my, my person didn't win? Can you believe this happened? Can you? Yeah, I can believe it. How many of you can about believe anything in 2020? You know why I can believe it? I can believe it because John says there are antichrists that already exist in the world. Hey, don't be shocked when the world makes bad decisions. Don't be dismayed when people grab on to things that aren't true. There is this deception in the world. There is this spirit of antichrist that's in the world. And it is blinding the minds and hearts of those who will not believe. What I don't want is that week of our missions conferences coming in and dragging, oh, I'm so discouraged, I'm so disappointed. What are we going to do now? I'll tell you what we're going to do now. I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to support more missionaries. I'm going to support more news missionaries. Hopefully, you're going to support some more missionaries. And we're going to get excited about the commission that God has given to us. Hey, what are we going to do after November 3rd? We're going to still come to church and worship our great God. What are we going to do after November 3rd? We're going to go out into our community and tell people about Jesus and win people to Christ and disciple them here at church and send them out to be missionaries. That's what we're going to do. And I'm excited about this morning. I wish you would get excited about it this morning. Somebody say amen if you're excited that Jesus is still going to be on the throne after November 3rd. What are, we, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we're going to keep being faithful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, because he's an abiding spirit. This is a promise that's been given to us by God. Notice with me, verse number 25, and this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. How many of you are glad if you're saved this morning, you can never lose your salvation? You can never lose it. You didn't earn it yourself anyway. You can never lose it. You have eternal life in him. Verse 26, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Hey, yes, there is power that exists in this world and it's evil power and it's seducing power and it's easy for us to get dismayed. How many of you remember Elijah in a cave complaining to God about how he's the only one left? And sometimes we take that mentality when we look at the world and we see everything that's going on. Oh, it's so depressing. I'm so discouraged. What am I gonna do? Well, the Bible says, yeah, there is this seducing spirit of Antichrist that's in the world, but you have an anointing. You have the spirit of God present in your life that will abide with you and will walk with you and will never leave you and will not forsake you. And he's for you. 
You have an anointing, verse 27, which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now, what is John saying here? Now, we like to twist the scripture because we like to say that John is saying, I don't need anybody to teach me. How many of you are kind of like me in that? I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't, need, I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. Right? I'll figure it out. I'm a smart guy. I'll get there if I need to. But that's not what John is saying in this verse. In fact, John would be crossing a line himself if he thought that nobody needed to be taught because he's teaching people here. So the instruction isn't that we shouldn't avail ourselves to teaching or that we shouldn't avail ourselves to instruction. But the idea here is that Brian Leversey or some other preacher isn't the ultimate teacher. The Holy Spirit of God is the ultimate teacher. And that is that wonderful protection that we have as believers, is that we don't just believe whatever a man will tell us, but again, we check it with the word of God and with the spirit of God that's in us to make sure that it's truth that they're giving. That helps ward off the seducers. Now that's why it's so, listen to me, that's why it's so important that whatever church you're in, you pick a church that preaches sound doctrine and preaches the whole counsel of God. It's because that's a protection for the church. It helps because we have all of these seducing spirits of antichrist that exist in our world that want to deceive and that want to seduce people away from the truth. And so by going to a church that preaches sound doctrine and gives us clear instruction from God's word, it protects us as individuals. It protects us as a family. It protects us as a church to hear the truth and to sense the presence of God's convicting power in our life as the Holy Spirit guides us to that truth. And John is saying there are seducers, but don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. He's an abiding spirit. Notice with me, verse number 27 again. And is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And how many of you are glad that we do have the indwelling spirit of God in us? What a blessing that is. We're so glad to have had you join us for this biblical study through 1 John. We're so glad that we can know exactly who God is. and We can know who we are in our relationship with Him. And we hope that you'll join us again next week right here on Coming Home with Fellowship Baptist Church.